I'd like to start today by acknowledging a very special couple who have not only been my sponsors, they've been editors, advisors, mentors, and most importantly, friends. Alan and Beckett, thank you so much for this opportunity. <laughs> So, opportunities for the small family farm. Myself and my partner, Dayan, farm in West Wales. This is where we call home. We milk 160 dairy cows and we keep 120 ewes. So I wanted to look at opportunities for the family farm um, for selfish reasons, to find future direction for our own business. Um, but I also work off farm as a farming connect facilitator. So I work with agricultural discussion groups. And what I see when I work with businesses is that often um, farms support multiple generations, two, three, even four in some cases, um, and many are not profitable without subsidies. In fact, scarily, some are not profitable with subsidies. Tradition can often inhibit transition. So, Looking outside of the UK into Europe, 89% of the 16.4 million people that work on European farms are either the farm holder themselves or a direct relation to the farmer. So farms really are feeding the world. Small farms are feeding the world. If you look into India, Asia, Africa, it's subsistence farmers who are feeding their communities. And few farms are not family businesses. So on my Nuffield travels, I visited the UK and Ireland, I visited Canada, um, New Zealand and France, and my Nuffield journey has not only been about the places that I've been to visit, but also about the people who've come to visit me, so I'm very grateful to have had the opportunity to get to know my own local area a little better now as well. So why do we farm? I farm because I'm proud to produce food, I enjoy the great outdoors, I enjoy the miracle of nature, the flexibility of working for myself. There's a whole host of reasons that farming is an exceptional industry to be involved in. We don't all farm for cash, but I argue today that if we're not profitable, none of the other perks of the job will be available to us in the future. So profitability must be number one. Oh, the, the children that you see in the slide here um, were um, a, a Dutch family who living in Canada now and the parents decided they wanted to homeschool their children and they also had a slight mistrust of some of the food in Canada just due to the antibiotic and hormone use in meat. So for them, agriculture fitted their lifestyle that they could take control over the diet of their children, they could homeschool their children and spend time together as a family. I argue that the main output of a business must be bankable, and this is probably the most photographed sign by Nuffielders visiting New Zealand in bulls, but outputs must be bankable. So I can't introduce you to all of the people that I visited on my travels, but what I can do is show you that the key thing that every person I visited had in common was that they had energy and drive and attitude does determine success. So there's no recipe for success, but I think there are a few key ingredients. Every business needs a strategy, and that strategy must be appropriate for the people involved in the business and the farm itself. Each person must be capable, and where capability is lacking, it's very possible to upskill or buy in expertise. So I recommend a, a whole family skills assessment so that people involved in a business can play to their strengths, do what they enjoy doing, and really add value. Communication. We've already heard about communication this morning and how important it is. But if you've got the right strategy and you've got the capability to drive your business forward, if you can communicate it effectively, both within the business, within the family, between farm staff, and um, within sectors that support your business, then I'd argue that although capital is vital, 
it's probably the least important thing on this slide. Because if you can communicate your strategy and your capability, you will get somebody else to believe in you. And if that's the bank manager or someone going into a joint venture with you, then the rest becomes possible. But I just also ask you to remember that what was right 10 years ago may not be right today. What was right yesterday may not be right today. So constant evaluation is important. In New Zealand, I met an inspirational lady, Mavis Mullins, who taught me that failing to plan is planning to fail. And I'm sure you've all heard that many, many times, but that really is the crux of business. In Northland, New Zealand, I met with Taffy, who many of you will know as a fellow 2013 Nuffield Scholar. Taffy works full-time for Dairy NZ, but in his spare time, he's developed a business from nothing. A friend of his was renting some ground um, and keeping some stock, but struggling to manage his time to manage the stock effectively. So in return for implementing a rotational grazing system, Taffy was able to keep some stock of his own there for free. Over years, this has developed into um, a business with considerable turnover. As his grazing's improved, the carrying capacity of the land has in increased, and he's been able to increase his stocking numbers. So opportunities for the small family farm. There's hundreds of opportunities out there, and they won't be the same for everybody. I looked at diversification, I looked at collaboration, intensification, joint ventures, efficiency. You'll see the picture in the slide there is me um, buying milk from a vending machine in New Zealand. In Ireland, I met with Alo Mohan, whose um, route to success had been around reducing his cost of production, increasing his efficiency. Um, utilising new technology and really fine-tuning his business to reduce his energy costs. In the caves in Roquefort in France, I saw how the provenance in France is incredibly important to, to the French consumer and how building a global brand has incredible buying power. In Canada, I saw people farming tourists this is a pumpkin cannon on a farm just outside of Edmonton. <laughs> on the 1st of November, your pumpkins lose the majority of their value. So what could be more fun than firing them? What they told me was miles, but you know, every, every good story has a bit of exaggeration. But people were traveling in excess of four hours to visit this farm for the farm experience. If we consider that in UK terms, think about the cities that you would take in. And working together, both within families and outside of the business, working together is crucial for success. This is a discussion group in, in Canada, but I visited discussion groups in, in Ireland and New Zealand as well. And I really do believe that often a problem shared is a problem halved. Working together could involve joint farming ventures. It could be the share milking model that you see in New Zealand and, and Ireland and is you know, becoming more popular here. So in conclusion, with no profit comes no opportunities. A bigger is not necessarily more profitable. I'm sure many of us know people who have taken on a second unit and it's compromised their core business by doing so. So we must be profit driven. And success is driven by people and not systems. So going forwards on our, on our family farm, we're trying to implement what, what I've learned and the route that we're going down is being much more profit focused. Continue to travel and continue to seek new opportunities. Today's not the end of my Nuffield journey, it's just the end of the beginning. We're aiming to improve efficiency and intensify. We have increased our stock numbers considerably over recent years, and we're trying to be the best at what we do. If we're not already doing things to the best of our ability, how could we consider diversification or working with somebody else or bringing somebody else into the business? We have to perfect what we're doing already and then move on to the next challenge. We're considering technology and improving our infrastructure. 
we're working towards um, taking some more labour on to, to help us achieve that elusive work-life balance, but not at any cost. Our decisions are now cost-based, but we are working on building relationships in the community, relationships with neighbours, relationships with landlords or potential landlords, relationships with the bank manager, for instance. We want to create as many opportunities for ourselves as possible going forwards. So I'm going to leave you with this slide. This is a farm that I visited in Canada where they're using mountain dogs to protect their livestock from predators. And they were running meat box schemes which were being marketed on the internet and social media. And I ask you to consider the phrase tradition and transition. This business really summed up the tradition and transition but we need to recognise and acknowledge the information that's passed down in farming businesses from generation to generation and realise that a lot of tradition is based on sound agricultural knowledge. But we must also embrace the change and the new information that becomes available to us every day. So, tradition and transition. <laughs>